quasi contract what do you mean by quasi contract and what are the different provisions with related to quasi contract let's check it's a very small topic quasi contract is not that huge not that big it's like very small hardly it will take 5 to 6 minutes to understand what do you mean by quasi contract and what are the different provisions so the word quasi means having some resemblance to but not all it means something similar it's not exactly the same but it is similar so when we are saying quasi contract it is a con uh, it is something which is similar to a regular contract but not exactly a contract so quasi contract meaning laws which are like regular contract law but not quite so a regular contract should have some essential components to be considered valid it like uh, any normal contract would have offer acceptance consideration to or more parties who are legally and mentally capable etc whereas quasi contract definition is based more on the principles of natural law such as moral con uh, coincidence then justice honesty duty towards another human being etc so when we are saying quasi contract it is something which resembles to a contract but not exactly a contract but there are certain provisions which uh, make this as a contract right so what do we exactly mean by the name main difference between contract and quasi contract is that in the case of letter there is no exchange of offer acceptance or consideration between two or more parties however it is still legally enforceable that is the major difference if there is no uh, like offer acceptance we say that there is no contract but in case of quasi contract it happens without even that it is enforceable for example if a package belonging to a is delivered to m then m is legally obliged to return it to a if m refuses up the contract contents of the packages for himself then a has the right to sue him in that case the court can order m to reimburse a under quasi contract law now how does it happen let's check one by one so according to the indian contract act 1872 there are five types of quasi contract laws those five contract laws are like this first one supply of necessities now what happens if you are supplying somebody the necessary items which the other person is not able to supply right you're doing a duty you're doing something which the other person should be doing but since the person is not capable of doing so you can do it and later on you can recover the same amount from the other person's property an individual who is legally incapable of entering into any agreement or if the person is unable to support themselves then another individual who is legally responsible for supporting the former then the later will be reimbursed from the state of the dependent instances of quasi contract cases include if c supports the family of his friend d who is mentally incompetent then she should be provided with the reimbursement from d's property simple it is if i am helping you if i am helping your family then i can collect the money from your uh, estate or from your property right that is the first scenario the second one is payment by an interested party now what does it mean under a quasi contract in business laws if any individual wishes to make payment of money which the other party is legally bound to pay and who eventually bears the cost shall receive retribution from the latter for instance if person a pays off b's outstanding debt then the latter must reimburse a under quasi contract like if you are supposed to pay some some amount to somebody and i am paying it in, on your behalf then i can collect that money from you there is an mutual understanding between you and me there would stand a contract that is something called as again a quasi contract right it is also very simple next one it is obligation to pay for a non gratuitous act now non gratuitous act means something that i haven't done for free in circumstances where a person performs an act for another which he or she is legally bound to do and which is not performed out of gratitude then the person for whom it is being done must compensate the same i can give you an example like if i am taking a class for you which i am doing for some fee that you are paying to me but what happens in my class some other person comes and sits which he or she is not supposed to do but still sits and attends and gets some benefit clears the exam then there is an out uh, you know com implied quasi contract between me and that person that i should be getting paid from that person because i was doing something for you which i was legally bound to do as i have collected fees from you and it was a paid thing it was not at all free but the other person has taken some benefit out of it so the other person is now responsible to pay for it that is again one example of quasi contract there is one example if a shopkeeper delivers some goods to b's house then b is bound to pay the shopkeeper for services performed however if the shopkeeper returns the goods that b has uh, b had forgotten then b is not liable to compensate him or her 
as it was an act of gratuity then that is something different if it is for free then not but otherwise it is finder of goods a person who comes across any item belonging to another individual and takes it under his custody then he or she is must take proper care of the thing as much as he or she would take care of an item of the same value bulk and quality until the appropriate owner is found if the owner is not found then of course the finder can retain the item as their own according to quasi contract so if you receive something if you find something on the street then you must take care of that property until the real owner is found it becomes your responsibility and if it doesn't if it is not found then of course you can take the entire amount that is uh, up to you only that is again one more provision of quasi contract one more thing is a mistake of coercion section 71 71 of the contract law states that an individual who receives any item by mistake or through coercion is legally bound to return the item or re uh, repay the person who initially made the payments for example if parcel is delivered belonging to b is delivered to a then a must return it to b promptly that is something if you have received something uh, by mistake or even because of coercion if you have received something then you should be returning it otherwise you will also be taken as equally culprit in the a uh, scenario involved in the situation involved right these are five provisions of these are the five scenarios rather than provisions of quasi contracts now the entire quasi contract is based upon one principle called unjust enrichment now what is this unjust enrichment one of the main features of quasi contract is unjust enrichment in the case of unjust enrichment one party delivers benefits either by mistake or through the other party's misfortune or loss additionally when an individual enjoys advantages for which he or she has made proper payments or has not worked for it and which has not intended as a gift then it is termed as unjust enrichment it's like something you are getting some benefit out of it because of my bad luck my misfortune you are getting some advantage so that is the entire concept of unjust enrichment is right now based on this the courts consider several other aspects while deciding whether an unfair enrichment has taken place or not under quasi contract in the indian contract act these elements are given below so the court will decide based on these and the defendant must have received benefits or advantages which he or she is not entitled to something you have got which you are not supposed to get the plaintiff should have sustained loss or damage of some kind when the defendant received unjust enrichment now when you are receiving some uh, enrichment when you are receiving some benefit i should have got some loss right that is also there the benefit which you are not supposed to get you have got and because of that benefit i have like because of my loss only you have got some benefit so that is the scenario the court also needs to prove that the enrichments or benefits in question are unfair to create a cause a cause i contract so that was something not actually fair that should also be proved there should be no proper explanation for enrichment additionally the plaintiff also needs to justify as to why it is unfair for the defendant to be in possession of the goods without paying for it these things if they are proved then that we will call it as unjust enrichment right this is something called as quasi contract